welcome back to another episode of the Woman Podcast. My name is Katie Bizet, and I'm your host. And today we are talking all things plants. So we're going to do a little summer series, a little easy listening, um, some fun topics over the next couple of weeks. But today we are talking about how to be a plant mom, and we've got two plant professionals here. Oh my gosh. And <laughs> just going to talk through some tips. So how to keep your plants alive, how to pick plants, all those things. So we have Nikita Reno with us. Say th- say hi, Nikita. Hey. And then we've got Maya Ramos with us. Hello. And Nikita's been on the podcast before, way back in our very first season. Yeah. We did a crazy episode called Let's Talk About Porn. Yep. Which I guess you didn't know you were going to listen, hear that on a plant episode. <laughs> but hey, if you want to go surprise. back. Surprise. Surprise. <laughs> so you can go back and listen to that one. It was so good. Um, and then Maya and her husband, Daniel, pastored the Espanol campus. Hola. Hola. So if you have any Spanish speaking friends, send them Maya's way. Yes, we would love to meet them. Yeah. Ten thirty downtown. Ten thirty in Conway on Sundays. Um, okay, so this like a couple of weeks ago we did a class here at New Life Church in Conway. We have little sisterhood classes and the the one that you guys led was based on plants, right? Yeah. Yeah. So let's talk about plants. Let's talk about plants. Like that. Okay. So let's just talk about plants. <laughs> like I'm sort of a plant person. My dad, um, has definitely has a green thumb. He was a farmer. So I like thought that I was going to naturally inherit this ability to grow plants. And I have like 50% of the ability. I'm not proud of it, but like, how did y'all get into planting? <laughs> Yeah, well, my mom also loves house plants, and so we always had them in our homes. Mm-hmm. And then when I moved out and got my own apartment, I just started acquiring plants. And then I had friends who loved plants, and then it became a borderline obsession. <laughs> right. <laughs> the rest is history. What about you, Nikita? Um, so I had one plant, maybe two post or pre-pandemic. So I got into plants like a lot of other people did during like the shutdown and stuff. Um, And I started researching them, learning about how to take care of them. And I just fell in love with all things plants, growing plants, talking about plants. And um, now we're at, I was at a hundred plus at one point. I had to, I had to wean it down. Oh my gosh. It's like we were all home. Yes. All growing and we were so satisfied like watching something grow. Yes. Right. We have to have more. Yeah. So now I'm at like 60 plus, probably closer to 70 plus. Oh my gosh. That's pretty good for me, so. Okay, (laughs) when we finish recording this podcast, I need y'all both to go home and do like a little video tour (laughs) of your plants, and we'll post it on the woman's story so that everyone can see the tour of all your house plants, all the craziness. (laughs) Um, So you both, you were more recent Mm -hmm. in your plant love, and you were a few, yeah, it's been a steady incline. Um. Are you a vegetable person or just a houseplant person, Nikita? I am just a houseplant person. Okay. I have tried to do a garden. I have tried to grow herbs. Yeah. I've tried to go flower, grow flowers outside. Like and I am so unsuccessful <laughs> with things outside. Okay. So. I just forget about it. <laughs> okay. So this is strictly a houseplant conversation. Houseplants. Okay. Yes. I'm glad we could establish that boundary. <laughs> um, okay. So. The plan, ladies, is just to talk through a couple of tips from Nikita and Maya both have a few tips for how to keep our plant life happy. So let's just do it. Okay. Who wants to go first? Um, I'll go first. So first things first, I would say don't just pick up a plant just because you think it's cute. Um, Like when you see someone with this beautiful plant on Instagram and you're like, I'm going to go buy that. But what you don't know is that plant has its own personal greenhouse with its own personal humidifier and they fly water in from the spring at the top of Mount (laughs) Fiji to water it to keep it looking beautiful. And then you get it home and in two days it's Mm -hmm. like crispy and crusty. Mm -hmm. Right? So do a little research. Don't just get it because it's cute and don't just get it because it's popular and you see it everywhere, right? I mean, you've got to 
just kind of be aware of your environment. Be aware of like what your lighting is like in your house, how much time you're going to be able to give to it. So um, don't follow the fads. Okay. I follow the fads of Calatheas, and I regret it. I regret it a lot. <laughs> what is that? It's the diva of the plant. Um, yes, it's like Calatheas and then fiddle leaf fig. Yes. Uh, yeah. Everybody wants a fiddle leaf, but everybody a got fiddle schooled leaf on fiddle leaves. Doesn't want everybody. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? No. Like they don't want you. Yeah. So I leave mine to rest. <laughs> For real. I remember when the fiddle leaf was the thing. It's like everybody went and got a fiddle leaf, and I should have gotten the plastic one from Target. But I didn't. Target did a really good plastic campaign after that. Yeah, Yeah, they were like, you can't do it by our. Yeah. Um, Okay. And I guess another thing I would say is don't be afraid if you kill a plant. Like, some of the best plant parents kill plants all the time. I've killed numerous amounts. There's a plant graveyard in my backyard. I will not send you that video. Um, And sometimes it's, like, not your fault. I mean, sometimes maybe you, like, did something to it, but, like, sometimes you get plants who who are just already sick, you know? You don't know what greenhouse they came from and all that. So just don't be discouraged if one of your plant dies, because the best thing about it is you can just buy another one. That's true. You know. So, like, how do you research... And figure out if a plant is going to do well in your home. Um, I do. I Google. You just Google it. I just Google it. Um, so, you know, I mean, I have some really easy plants, but, like, I have I, I have some wish list plants, like micans, perus. We can talk about that. Just yeah. hop onto my Instagram. <laughs> we can talk about it. But, like, I just Google, like, okay, what are their natural conditions? Mm-hmm. What do they grow in their natural habitat? And can I, like, uh, do that in my house? Can I create mm-hmm. very similar conditions to that? Do I have adequate lighting? Mm-hmm. Do I have enough space? Because, hello, 60-plus plants. So mm-hmm. maybe I don't need another one, but maybe I do. <laughs> you probably do. I probably do. I'm sure you can find a little um, <clears throat> Yeah. And then the last thing I would say is you don't have to break the budget on Mm -hmm. buying plants. You can learn how to propagate. There are tons of videos on Google. Mm -hmm. Propagating is basically like just taking cuttings from your plants, sticking them in water, and growing new ones. That's how I grew a lot of my collection. So you don't have to break the bank. And you can also, like, trade cuttings with plant friends. Or if you are risky, you can maybe take some clippings from public places. I'm not saying that I've done that. Right. I'm not saying that I have not done that. No. <laughs> right. We're not condoning that you find a no. piece of a plant at a no. store no. on the ground. No, sometimes I'll give them to you yeah. if you ask. Yeah. But they will. They will. But those well, are my tips. So. Okay. I'll piggyback off of that. I tell people all the time when you're picking out a plant, think about the place you want to put it in your house first because... What a lot of people don't realize is light is like plant food. Mm-hmm. You know, all these people sell fertilizers and say that it's plant food, but really mm-hmm. light is plant food. So when you, like right now, mm-hmm. Home Depot, Lowe's, Walmart, Kroger, they got all these beautiful plants this time of year. Mm-hmm. And before you snag that plant and take it home, think about where am I going to put this in my house? Yeah. Because, you know, we got to set ourselves up for success. Yeah. Those. yeah. Like we are going to kill them. Sometimes, right, but it happens. You know, right, that perfect place. So, if you have like a super dark room and you want to plant in your room, probably not. Probably, I didn't get that plastic. It's funny. On Pinterest, <laughs> there'll be like top five plants that don't need light. That is false. Lies. Don't listen to the lies. Of the All lies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Plants need light. Photosynthesis. Photosynthesis. Right? It wasn't yeah. in high school, but it's cool now. It is. It is cool now. Um. So light is plant food. So make sure your plant is getting plenty of light. Okay. Or based on the light it needs. Some of them don't need that super direct light. Some of them do. Do your research. Okay. Um, and then something that else is very popular right now that I will say is my tip for success is to not move your plants outside all of a sudden. I see people okay. sometimes they'll take it outside to like get a little sun bath. Mm-hmm. And we like that, you know, so mm-hmm. you never go out and lay in the sun, but mm-hmm. your plant doesn't. Mm-hmm. You know? <laughs> okay going to be like me at the beach we just fry up <laughs> and sunburn on plants is a real thing they yeah sunburn just like we do but they will have to grow new foliage so okay when you put your plant outside like your family or whatever mm-hmm. it is um 
your leaves can get pretty burnt. So I tell people if they do want to move them outside this time of year, which it does like you get a lot more growth mm-hmm. and really fast, I say put them in full shade for like two weeks to acclimate them. Gotcha. But honestly, it might not be worth all the hassle because then you're like exposed yeah. to all the pests and Ugh. the weather, sometimes the wind is yeah. too hard on them. So I say if you're going to do it, find a really good spot. Mm-hmm. But don't take them out there just to water them because you're going to fry it up and then wonder what you did because it, it'll take a mm-hmm. while to hit. It's yeah. Hard. Okay, yes. that's a good tip. Because I see a lot of people post, like, take them outside. It's warm now. Yeah. What do you do if your plant does get sunburned? Like, do you have to cut that leaf off? No. Let it die? Not necessarily. I mean, if it's really bad, I I will, like, take it off. Because what you need to understand is, like, if a plant's leaf is damaged, the plant is going to try to heal it, right? It's going to put all of its energy trying to heal this leaf well, and then that would probably eliminate some of the new growth that could happen because your plant is, like, giving all this energy to it. So if it's, like, really bad, mm-hmm. just chop it off. It's fine. I tell people if it's more than 50% damage, cut that off. Yeah. Because if it's got at least half the leaf, it can still use that good half mm-hmm. to produce new growth. Mm-hmm. And so, and that's not only if you put it outside. Like, if you overwater your plant. Oh, my gosh. Or whatever. That's the number one thing that I see when people... Uh, killing their plants yeah. for sure is more over water is not more love no it, that's I love it yeah. more water is not more love that's I'm gonna so put that quotable. on a shirt yes. <laughs> we'll have tattoos <laughs> <laughs> we'll you can uh, get yeah yeah water is not more love. like don't water your plants two and three times a week because you're probably drowning it like okay. it's fine okay you know well, research just, again do some research okay yeah Okay, yeah. that's good. So, don't bring your plants outside. Yeah. And then. And if you do, just follow the steps. Mm-hmm. Sun okay. Anything else? Any other major tips? Man, more water's not more love. I tell people. Um, a lot of people ask, "Oh, do I need like a tool to check the water or whatever?" Not girl. Use your hand. Just stick your finger in there, and if the dirt is dry, then it's time to water. It's not done. Um, okay. Because Sometimes we, we just get excited about yeah. our plants and we want to yeah. tend to them. But, you know, just, you don't have to buy anything fancy. Yeah. Just poke that dirt and it's dry. <laughs> Another thing is that what I found, and like I don't know how you feel about this, Maya, but sometimes people have like a watering day. So like every Wednesday yeah. of the week, I'm going to water my plants. Uh, I don't recommend that no. because okay. sometimes all your plants don't need to be watered on Wednesday. If you're watering a snake plant every Wednesday, your snake plant is going to die. Do you know? I mean, because they can go like months without having water. Don't recommend it, but they can. Right. Um, I water <coughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Okay. So don't have a watering schedule like you can keep a little like journal or something mm-hmm. if you want i don't but um just i just it out. it's just intuition i just know my babies and i'm like oh you're thirsty <laughs> also they will show you they like will. plants will show you if they're There's thirsty not. they'll droop they'll faint Photonias will faint yeah. peace lily yeah i feel like though with like succulents specifically it's hard for me to know they don't have to me they don't have a look that's like i need water yeah i haven't no. learned it uh, I'm not successful with succulents. Okay. I um, I don't like them. I'm just okay. going to be honest. Yeah, I know. This is a safe place. We're going <laughs> to You don't either? You know, I'm oh, sorry, wow. other plant people out there who just love succulents. I mean, I like to look at them. Mm-hmm. I think they're beautiful. I don't want to grow them because... Um, we just don't have the best environment. And so we're not... Gotcha. Bad, you know... If I'm not going to be successful, I'm not going to enter into that world. There you go. No. There, there you go. Know we know our limits. We know what's going to so, work. So I have a question. Um, I feel like I've seen you post, Maya. I don't know if you do this to Nikita, but about like repotting once a year or once yeah. every so often. Yeah. Is that a thing? And why do you do it? <clears throat> So I repot mine. It probably ends up being about once a year in the spring or summer. Mm-hmm. I don't usually do it in the winter when it's growing season because either they like reach their max capacity in that pot, or I want to make room for more growth. And you can usually tell um, 
just by sometimes literally the roots will start mm-hmm. growing out of the bottom of the pot. Mm-hmm. Um, or when you water it, like the water is just not really soaking in because it's just roots and there's no dirt left. And so I do that, you know, it just allows your plant to get bigger. Okay. And it's yeah. taller in the summer. Um, same. That's the reason why I repot. I've been repotting a lot this summer. Um, another reason that I would repot is if I see pests mm. in the dirt. Okay. And there are some stores, if you buy plants from them, you will see little creepy crawlies mm. in them. And we don't want that in our house. So that's another reason that I would like okay. repot. Like typically if I buy a new plant, I like to keep it in its like growing pot for okay. a while just so it can acclimate to the house. But um, if there are creepies in there, creepy crawlies, mm-mm, that's got to go. Okay. That's good to know. And you throw that out. Throw that and trash you out. don't <laughs> bring it back in. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay. Um, I'll ask one more question. So... I feel like because I'm more of like a work in the yard person, I don't necessarily tend to house plants, but I like to like, you know, work in the yard and plant plants and flowers and hope that they live. And I always feel like when I'm working in the yard, it's like God teaches me something oh through gosh. the plants, like spiritual lessons yes. via plants. So I was just going to ask you both, do you feel like God ever like speaks to you or teaches you anything through the whole plant process? And can you think of like one thought? Related to yes. plants, spiritual growth. Yeah, for me, it uh, is when I'm propagating mm-hmm. because I know that when I'm cutting things off, it's going to produce um, new growth, and it always reminds me of that scripture of Jesus is like, "I am the vine, mm-hmm. you are the branches," um, and like He's pruning for a reason, mm-hmm. and like in those seasons, I mean, Jesus will like cut things out of our lives, or like you know kind of say no to certain things because he knows that what's coming is better. Like the pruning may be painful and it may look like I'm losing something, but in the end, Mm -hmm. like I'm going to flourish bigger Mm -hmm. and be stronger. And Mm -hmm. that's the same. I I, I learned that with my plants all the time, which is probably why I have like 20 propagations currently, you know? So yeah. That's so good. Yeah. I love it. It's fine. I love it. I think for me, um, there was a season where, I just compared my relationship with the Lord to a lot of other people. And it was discouraging to me, and I'm sure I'm not the only person who's done that before. Mm-hmm. And I read this book. It's called Sacred Pathways. And it basically is like tells you your love language with the Lord. And so there's these different chapters on how we connect with God. Mm-hmm. And it has little quizzes. It tells you in mine, I think it was called like the naturalist or something like that. Mm-hmm. And it explained how you... <clears throat> you connect with God through nature and Mm -hmm. his creation and when I read that I thought wow this makes so much sense this Mm -hmm. is why I love like getting my hands dirty and watching plants grow and going out into nature Mm -hmm. and just seeing you know God's creation Mm -hmm. because it just reminds me Mm -hmm. just who he is and it's like I can just put on some worship music and be repotting my plant yeah and that's like my holy moment yeah some people yeah they are in a quiet room mm-hmm. praying for hours well I can do that I just need a plant with me <laughs> yeah and so it's just truly how I connect with mm-hmm. God it's like my Sabbath rest is best when I'm just doing something like that he's created mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. looking at these plants and nerding out on the variegation and being like god did it mm-hmm. yes you know? absolutely that's so that's, awesome that's truly i just the best way for me to connect with mm-hmm. god after a hard week or just when i'm praying through something mm-hmm. just to have my hands in the dirt i'm like god i'm with you right now you yeah. Know? yeah yeah so yeah well and it's like such a great opportunity to like put our phones down be yep. away from screens be away from distractions and it's yep. like just I don't know. I, I connect with God too yeah. on just in nature in general. And so I love it. I feel like there's so many little lessons. Like the more you are in nature and dealing with plants, mm-hmm. like even just pulling weeds out of your oh, life. Yeah. I mean, there's just so many ways we could go. But okay. Are there any last thoughts that you would like to leave with our plant ladies listening? Or did we just cover all the tips? I mean, we covered a lot. Again, just if you're thinking about it, um, don't think, oh, I've always, I mean, I have a 
a, a, what is it, a black thumb or whatever. I just think <laughs> a black thumb. if you are thinking about it, just do some research and start with some easy plants. Let's tell them some easy plants yeah, yeah. that they yeah. can start with. Start, I always tell people, start with the snake plant. Oh, yeah. It can take lower light. It can take higher light. It doesn't need a lot of, like, humidity and fancy food you mm-hmm. Yeah. It just needs okay. to... Okay. It's all the nickname for that is also mother in law's tongue. Yep. No shade, but that's, that's just the, that's a that's just a name for it as well. I like well. snake plant better. And me too. <laughs> Sense of area. Okay, so start with the snake plant. Um, or pothos. Pothos. Yeah. They're super easy. You'll see those around a lot. They're just really easy. They grow really fast, so it's really rewarding. Um, so if you're thinking about it, just start with one of those because they can basically survive in any environment. So awesome. To it. Yay. Well, thank y'all for being with us. Ladies, if you're listening, we'll put some notes like in the show note description with some of the tips and some of the plan ideas and how you can. And we both have Instagrams yes. too. Yes. We'll so. put that in there so that you guys listening can find Maya and Nikita on Instagram and watch their plant journeys <laughs> and follow their plant tips. Yeah. So. All right. Thanks for listening to another episode of the Woman Podcast, and we will see you back next week. Bye. Bye. Thank you.